Okay, everybody, we finished the article today on this intermittent fasting test we're going to do here for the next 28 days. This is intermittent fasting, plus some paleo, throw in some Charles Poliquin, mix it all about, toss Berardi on top, and here's our hodgepodge of science. So, before anybody goes crazy about the fact that I'm telling you to fast, here's some of the science behind what we're looking at. Fasted an individual, for most of you here, this is, we're looking at fat loss, right? Optimizing body comp. So, in a fasted state, a non-exercising individual between the 18 and 24 hours of their fast is going to burn two times as much subcutaneous fat, so the stuff on the surface. It's a double increase in fat burn. That's a pretty phenomenal number. So the cool thing is we can optimize this number and enhance it a lot with exercise. So Martin Burkham would argue in the model could also have some interesting stuff saying that Ideally, this window can be moved almost down to about a 12 to 18 hour window if you're exercising. So with exercise, we can greatly amplify this whole process. This is a cool bit of number because if a person's looking to lose fat, especially stubborn fat, burning double the amount is going to drastically increase the time that we cut fat off the body. Now for those of you who are trying to put on muscle mass or more lean tissue, aid recovery, do a bunch of cool training stuff. There's another really great thing that happens in the fast. So, unfasted individual, this is their growth hormone levels. It's a big spike, it's a GH spike. That's someone who's fed. 24 hour period, one big spike in a day. Now the cool thing is in the fasted state, yet again, we see an increase in GH levels. We see four big spikes over the course of the day, not necessarily on a regular interval, but four larger spikes of growth hormone, which for those people who are trying to put on more lean muscle mass tissue, or just try to get an overall healthier physique that's burning more fat, this is a great thing to play with with our exercise. Again, this happens in a 24 hour period, but we do know that working with heavy loads or strength training will increase the amount of growth hormone a person is getting over the course of a day, or increase the size of the spikes. So. Exercise, exercise, cool things happen when you're fasted. Now, the protocol, as I've laid it out, is not exactly a lean gains approach. It isn't sort of an eat, stop, eat approach. It's not a warrior diet approach. We're playing with something that is easily built into a general week, allows for a relaxed schedule, not a lot of carb counting or calorie counting, being feeling satiated when eating. It does a lot of really cool stuff. So, Here's the breakdown on a seven day schedule. Okay, so day one of your cycle. Day one for us is the day we start our first fast. It's a 20 hour fast, boom. This is gonna start between 12 o'clock and four o'clock p.m. We're starting a 24, 20 hour fast. Now we're not doing a full 24 hours, we're not doing anything crazy there, we're just doing 20 hours, which means if you start at 4 o'clock, the next day you can start eating at around noon. So day two, around noon, you'll have your first meal. This is going to be a big protein and carb rich meal. It's going to be awesome. And here's what's going to happen in the morning. So first thing in the morning, let's say you get up around 6, you're going to pound down some branched chain amino acids, BCAAs. And you're going to go for a walk. You're not going to run. You're going to stay in the nice fat burning zone and do either some really casual body weight training slash light strength training or a walk. Walk up a hill on a treadmill. I don't care. And with that, you're going to do some targeted core work. So every 10 minutes, hop up the treadmill, do a bit of core work. Try and get the blood flow down there. Boom. See here. Walk. And that'll be good. I don't know, anywhere from 30 minutes to an hour. Okay, then go about your day. For me personally, with my schedule at the gym and everything else, right around 11 o'clock, I'm having another branch chain caffeine fest, and I'm gonna do the strength workout. And I can't really repeat, so just ignore that. But strength workout at 11 o'clock. We're looking at big movements, complex, hard, heavy lifting, something that's gonna increase connective tissue health, bone density, and increase the spiking level of GH that we were looking at earlier. Then right after that, with all of your muscular glycogen supplies 
depleted with liver glycogen levels depleted, you're going to pound a whole bunch of carbs and a whole bunch of protein. Now we are trying to stay with a low carb approach. So you're looking at about an 80 grams, well, 60 to 80 grams between your goals of carbs, which is, if we said to say 100 grams, 400 to 500 grams of cal like calories. If that's a lot of food. So you have this big protein carb rich meal, probably again aiming for about the same amount of protein. Protein carb. This is going to speed muscle tissue repair. It's going to shovel all that fancy amino acids out to your muscular glycogen cells. It's going to make you feel like you're allowed to eat carbs on a low carb diet. It's a really cool thing. And we've got an eight hour feed. Eight o'clock, you quit eating. So between 12 and 8, if you're an average individual, 2,500 calories to get in your body. So probably two more big meals. These are going to be protein, fat meals. Healthy fats, coconut, almond, flour kind of stuff, olive oil, omega-3s, fat coming from your healthy meats, saturated fats coming from meat. And again, big heavy amounts of protein. So we are doing a high protein diet as well here. Cool stuff. If you don't like it, I don't care that much. From there, this kind of repeats for the rest of the week. So this is Monday, this was Sunday, day three, day four, day five, Let's see, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, two, Friday, day six. It's the exact same, you just repeat this, you've got a 12 to 8 window, eat each day. Same kind of cycle. You're looking to do some kind of training right before you come off your fast. It allows you to set things up really nicely to eat. You're going to be looking at eating a protein carb meal right after training and play with it. Every day you need to be doing this walk or some kind of light thing when you get up in the morning. If you have to shorten the period, that's fine. Don't increase the intensity. Keep yourself down in a nice fat burning zone. Just move around for a bit. That's what we're aiming for. So that happens all week. You get to your Friday, and the cool thing is, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, 12 o'clock, you start eating. You have your meal, awesome. And then you don't care. Day seven, Saturday, all the way through there, there's no cutting of calories, there's no watching meals, there's no just, it's just eat. Eat normally, eat paleo, enjoy the food, and just work on through that. You've got from Friday afternoon at noon until Sunday around noon or four o'clock to eat whatever you want. Well, about the paleo, but when you want to. You don't have to time things, you just take days off, just rest, let the body recover. So that's our protocol. Okay, that's the schedule. We talked about fasting and why we're doing this. So, a couple key things to understand here. This time frame doesn't have to happen. You could do it starting a fast at 6 o'clock. And then, fast until 10 o'clock the next morning. That'd be fine. It'd mean that you could eat, you're starting eating your breakfast meal at 10, eat a lunch at noon, eat another meal at 4 or 5 o'clock right before you sit your fast, and boom, it's almost like a regular lifestyle. Just forced to skip breakfast, which in many cases is actually kind of a nice thing. Now, the reason we're taking this 20 hour fast in here, and I was doing four 16 hour day fasts, is that the average person, boom, 2,500 calories times 7 days a week. Is eating 17,000, ooh, that's an awful pen, 500 calories a week, which, fair amount, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to take one day off of that by taking this fast, all of a sudden, you're down 15% of your overall calories, or roughly 350 calories a day, which isn't bad, right? I mean, 2,500 calories, it's a pound of fat a week. Um, if you don't get into the fact we're burning more fat, more fat, more quickly, whole bunch of cool stuff like that, right? So this allows that sort of optimal decrease in calories, so a calorically restricted diet, without ever actually restricting your calories during the day. Which means mentally you feel good, you're recovering well, but you never have to deal with the low carb thing. Uh, sorry, the low energy from limited calories thing. Which is a nice kind of mental break from the standard dietary protocol. Uh, what else we got in here? Supplement wise, you got your BCAAs, you're going to consume those with the walk and with the strength training. Just amps things up nicely. Uh, fish oil, specifically, or an algae oil. 
looking at omega-3s, 20 to 30 grams a day. Huge amount. I know, Charles Polycomo has got some really cool arguments about why this is like the best thing if you're trying to optimize body count. So just do it, I don't care what you think. Lastly, vitamin B3, unless you're not living in Alberta when you're doing this, and it's not winter. If you have lots of sunlight, and you're getting 20 to 30 minutes of direct sunlight on lots of skin, naked, every day, awesome. Otherwise, D3, probably like a 3,000 IU range a day, which is way higher than they recommend in the container. But again, we're going from some arguments from Rob Wolf, some cool paleo stuff, and their science is better than the nutrition guys, so I'm listening to them. So that's supplements. You can toss in a whey protein or a casein protein to get your overall protein levels up if you want to. Not super concerned with it though. I'm a big fan of whole foods and whole food approaches, so do what you want here. Uh, what else do we need to talk about, folks? We're looking at... Yeah, that's about it. I mean, it's a pretty simple protocol. For those of you who are worried about fasting and going catabolic and losing muscle mass and all that stuff, this has been the cool thing about researching for two weeks. This dietary myth it doesn't happen. You're not going to suddenly vanish in terms of your, your insulin levels, your blood sugar levels, if you don't eat for a while. It turns out the body's pretty good at regulating these things. And if you look at sort of the evolutionary protocol where we're coming from as a, as a human being, as a creature, it would have made it a lot of sense for us to eat custard, right? I mean, you, you kill prey or you get a hold of food and you eat. And then you don't eat until you can get something you get. It doesn't make sense to have a small meal every three hours as you have regular access to food. Part of the season, yes. The whole year, maybe not. So, let's toss grazing out the window and pretend we're not cattle and go with omnivores slash carnivores and eat clustered. Um, it should be able to do some cool stuff for us. So this is the test, 28 days. I would prefer that most people stay with this paleo diet. I've included some foods there that paleo kind of wise. We can toss up the recipes that go with it. This is what we're doing. It should be pretty awesome. I'm doing it as well. Trying to drop right now from about a 6.8% body fat down to 5 for comps coming up. Not sure if it's going to happen, but hey, we're going to play with it, right? So, if you're doing this and you're not seeing me on a regular basis, I need photos, I need tracked body fat measurements, and tracked weight measurements. Plus, I'd like to see where your strength is going on these lifts, your strength training. Um, any protocol that's doing big lifts, as long as you're squatting, benching, and deadlifting, and probably a heavy press or heavy pull up, I'm okay with it. If all you're doing is pink curl dumbbell stuff, grow up. Go get some weights on your body. I mean, we're looking at bone density, joint health, a whole bunch of cool stuff like this. This is to optimize performance, body comp, and health, right? So, and if you don't, haven't heard my rants on paleo and why you shouldn't be eating greens, just go make that happen. This carb thing, this is yams, this is sweet potatoes, this is squash, this is pumpkin, this is not go and have a Big Mac. Though if you were going to do it, it would be the time to do it. So, ignore that last comment. Uh, yeah, we're having some fun with this. If you're wondering ever why we say 12 o'clock and it's starting meal and we're skipping breakfast, you've heard the, the insulin sensitive in the morning whole spiel, that's because you're depleted in terms of muscular and liver glycogen levels. It doesn't matter when you break the fast or have a break fast. The point is that that break fast when you're most insulin sensitive. The fact we're also taking advantage of that spike GH level, doing strength training and then taxing our muscular glycogen supplies, just amps everything through the roof. 